first time on one of our calls, uh, if you're an Increase Academy or an Increase Warrior, and this is your first time on an Increase Army call, uh, Thursday Bible study, go ahead and drop it in the chat. Just say first time. We want to welcome you, make sure that uh, we can celebrate you making your first appearance on a live call and investing in what we know is going to be a great return in your life. Uh, anytime we invest in our growth and our development from a spiritual level, it never returns void. It always prospers and accomplishes so much more than we can ask, hope, or think, or imagine. So uh, throw it in the chat. We want to celebrate you and, and congratulate you for jumping on. And uh, it's going to be a fun day today, right, Trav? Dude, I'm excited. These have been fun. I have really, I'm going to just keep doing these. So if y'all keep coming, yes. perfect. Because uh, I'm going to keep doing it. Yes. Yes, we want you to keep doing it, man. I'm enjoying it. I look forward to Thursdays, whatever time zone you're in, where I'm at, it's 1030 Central. But I look forward to these times uh, because I know in my schedule, there's things that I've built in that help keep me aligned. They're, they're, all, they're just like guardrails. You know, I'm, I'm moving towards the goal, but sometimes I know human nature, we can get off at times. And having these regular things scheduled in my week are, it's like a cheat code. It's a, it's a game changer for helping me to make progress and then stay consistent, man. Yeah. So the, the consistency, I'm, I'm finding it's, it's about the most important thing there is. The, our enemy is constantly trying to get you distracted and off course. And here's what's cool about it. Or not cool about it, but what's sneaky about it is the enemy tries to get you off subtly by one little degree. I mean, he's not throwing thoughts at you that are trying to get you to stop being a Christian, stop going to church, stop doing all these, you know, go from this awesome life and start doing drugs and drink. And like, he's not just trying to get you to go from an amazing place to a horrible place. He's trying to get you just off a little bit. He's trying to get you to not pursue that dream in your heart. He's trying to get you to, to just slack a little bit here. Just get a little distracted there because he knows in time you'll get off majorly. If you get off, you know that analogy. If you get off one degree, you almost don't notice it. But if you're off one degree for a week, oh, there's a little bit of gap of from where I am to where I want to be. And then you get off for a month and then six months in a year and five years, 10 years, a decade. Now you're back to your old ways. You're back to living in that kind of that kingdom of darkness, but you didn't realize it. So what is cool about that is these touch bases, these types of consistent meetings are what helps keep you in the rails of success. It was what keeps you on that track. Because man, we don't want the, we don't want to be ignorant of the devil's strategies. The Bible tells us not to. And so we're just, part of what we're doing is uncovering them. And I got a, I got a great one for you today that's going to help I think everybody listening is going to be blessed by this. And it's something that you can take and uh, and run with and see results with pretty fast. So I'm excited about that. And like Rob was saying, welcome. If it's your first time, I see some people in the chat. Uh, it's Chris H's first time here. So glad you came. Um, you know, Elizabeth, welcome. Super fun. The uh, What we do here is is we believe that we are God's people, and he's called us to win. He has not called us to average. He has not called us to mediocrity. He has not called us to just survive while we're down here, and the only prize is when we go to heaven. That's a part of it, but that's not the only thing. So what we do here is we teach God's word and his principles that show us how to win now and later. And defining a win is moving the needle for the kingdom. There are desires in your heart that he's placed there. And when you act on those, the desires he's placed there, when you act on those, it moves the needle for the kingdom. I talk about this every week. There's a, there's a message in you. How many of you guys, and it's going to segue perfectly. I've asked this before. Put it in the chat. If I can see you, raise your hand. How many of you guys have a message in your heart that God's given you that you know would help and bless other people? Typically, it's something you've been through or overcame. 
And now you want to go help that people group do the same thing. Could be something as a, a single dad or a single mom or somebody who's trapped in a day job that they're miserable in, or maybe, a, maybe you were sick and God healed you and you now want to show other people how to have that same experience. Whatever it is for you, every single person I talk to has something like that. So you guys have something like that, right? A maybe I was struggling for me, it was um, financial, where it was like, wait a minute, I'm losing financially. This cannot be what God has for his kids. There has to be something in this book that shows me how to win financially. And I dove in and I was like, yeah, it's all over the place. Why are all these Christians broke? Why is everybody so poor all the time? Why are, why are Christians losing when it comes to money? You don't need to. It tells you what to do. So I was like, man, I got to start telling some people. I know what to do. I'll just show you. It's right here. That's all I'm doing. Well, I've got a message in my heart that I need to get out to other people. That message is evolving. And what that looks like now is I, I got to help you guys like get going on the thing that God has put in your heart to do. And what's cool is as you do that, more money does come into your life. Uh, this increased warrior program that, that we have, it's our coaching program. Rob can attest to this. Elise can attest to this. There's people joining all the time now. And it's growing. And the momentum over there, we get testimony and posts and all this stuff. Like people winning, people getting sales, people getting new clients, starting the business, quitting their job, writing the book, starting the YouTube channel, starting the podcast. Boom, 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 boom. It's momentum, momentum, fire, fire, fire. Right? Well, it's because they're learning these things. It's not that they necessarily learned some genius business strategy. It's because they learned what this said. And then they started to believe it. And then they started to take actions like they believed it. And then they started getting the results God said you could have. And so my job and mission, Rob's job and mission, the other coaches that are on here, our job and our mission is to get you to move. Is to get you to take action. Now, let's dive in and let's go to Romans 5.1. Actually, before we do that, let me grab. Yeah. Guys, and why Travis doing that, I want to encourage you to get something to write with. If you don't already have something, we, we take notes in these Bible studies because it's just so much great information, writing it down helps you uh, to submit, cement what you're hearing in your mind. It also is a great reference so you can go back and internalize it, study it deeper. So make sure you have something. Yeah, make sure you guys have something to write with. Um, let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, 11, and we're going to read it in the message. You guys, there's a good chance you haven't heard this scripture before, at least not in this translation. It's absolutely wild in the best way possible. Listen to this. Dear Corinthians, so he's writing to the church. That's us. Dear Corinthians, dear people on this call, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter into this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can with great affection. Open up your lives, live openly and expansively. Listen to this, guys. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. Check yourself for a minute. Am I doing that? Am I living in a small way? We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. You're doing that to yourself. He's saying you're putting your own lids and limits on yourself. I asked you a minute ago, how many of you guys have a, a dream and a message that you want to get out? Listen to how God works. 
God puts those messages in his people and says, go teach, go preach, go help them. I'm going to put people in your path so you can get that message to them. If everybody did that, the body of Christ would go to the next level. We wouldn't be poor. We wouldn't be broke. We wouldn't be sick. We wouldn't be just aiming for average. Each one of you guys can be and could be doing something big for God. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Man, is this helping anybody? This is 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 13 in the message. All right. I was talking to somebody the other day. We were talking about he knows what God has called him to do. He said something interesting. He said, every time I think about it, it was clear as day. And he told me the story. And I'm like, you did not miss God. I was like, you have heard from God. And he said, every time I think about it, I instantly, the second thought that immediately comes is, I can't do that because of my performance of how I've been living. I have not been a very good Christian. God asked me to do this. I haven't done it. God asked me to do that. I haven't done it. He told me to do something three years ago. I still haven't done it. The other day, he told me to go pray with somebody and I chickened out. How could I ever get on YouTube and teach and preach? And how, why would anybody listen to me? I can't even follow instructions. Okay, listen. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. What I'm trying to do is get all these lids and limits and restraints off of you that you've put on yourself. It's not God doing that. A lot of us make this mistake of thinking that God is holding you down or holding you back for a certain reason or purpose in that one day when you get some things right, then you can go and do whatever he's put on your heart to do. There's all these misconceptions when it comes to this concept and this topic. The problem is the devil's loving it. The devil's having a blast because we ain't doing anything. Have you noticed that all the people who are making the, the giant companies, the Jeff Bezos, the Elon Musks, all these guys who have the, they're kind of uh, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs back in the day, kind of on top of the world, right? None of them are Christians. Is that how it's supposed to be? Of course not. No. Why are they doing big things and we're not? Can anybody put in the chat? Any guesses? Why are these titans of the industries not Christians. Why are they winning and we're not? Put a guess, put some guesses in the chat for me. This is important. Jeff says they're operating more in faith than we are. That that actually might be extremely accurate. Yes. Sarah says Christians struggle with deserving, deservedness. 100%. What else? Any other reasons? Better strategy? Eh. Catherine says, if we're afraid of being seen, we think money is evil. Yeah. Tarcel talking about living with condemnation. That's right. They don't live with that stuff. Do you see? These are great answers. And I, and I appreciate anybody who responds and engages like this. Elena says, the enemy has strategies to make us think small. I think all of those answers are correct. And at the root, yeah, Gary says they don't care about offending. And listen, the being successful and wildly successful does not turn you into an evil, wicked person. Success and money is just going to magnify who you already are. 
there was somebody uh, recently in my life who uh, they come into some money, and not like a ton or anything, but um, I think they now make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. And somebody was talking to me about him, and they, and they said, man, money's really changed her. And I know this person very, very well. And I said, no, it hasn't. They were just like this when they were broke. You just didn't know it. And now that they have money, now things are, are they're a little, they act a little bit, um, I almost want to say louder. Everything is amplified. None of it was because they got, they changed because they got money now. Everything was just magnified. Everything was amplified in their lives. So what do we do? We have these confirmation biases of like, oh, yep, see, look, money changed them. And I was like, no, they were fearful before. They were kind of rude before. They were kind of selfish before. Honestly, they still are. But now that they have money, the enemy wants to make sure we associate money with that so that we'll short circuit if we try to go for money. Well, I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be wicked. I don't want to be this. I don't want to stab people. To get successful like those guys, you got to stab people in the back. You got to offend people. You got to do all these horrible things. It's the only way. That's not true. It's not what the Bible says either. The Bible says the love of money. It actually says the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And some who have pursued it have wandered from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Well, here's what's cool is the love of money just means you prefer money over other things. That's not you guys. None of y'all pre prefer money. You don't put money first in your life. You put God first. So you're good. Second is you're generous right now. All you guys on here have dreams of being generous and blessing others, right? You want wealth so that you can do more good, right? So cool, when you get wealth, what's going to happen? You're going to be able to do more good. Cool, I bought somebody's lunch last week. Great, next time you're going to buy the whole restaurant. That's what happens when Christians get wealthy. So you don't have anything to be afraid of. Let's get that off the table. And that only comes off the table if you take the time to get it off the table and to weed it out. The enemy will drop those things in like a seed, and over time, they'll take root in your heart and just become who you are and what you believe. And that's why a lot of Christians are just doing mediocre and okay things in life. You had a lot of great answers over here. And again, I think all of them are correct. I think the most important one was the one that talked about condemnation. Victor said over here, I had to correct my small group leader this week for saying money is the root of all evil. Great job, Victor. Not that we're the types who need to go and correct people, but we do want to bring uh, correction is good. Uh, so I, I commend you for doing that. But here's what's even more important is that it's forcing him to go dive into the word for himself. And I think that's one of the most important things we can do as God's people is get this in us for ourselves. So your small group leader, he's probably never read that scripture. He might not even know the reference. First Timothy 6.10. I I honestly used to go to this um, every year. My friend taught a high school class and he'd have me come in every single year. And it was at a Christian school. Every single year, I would start the class the same. I would say, who here has heard the scripture that money is the root of all evil? And 100% of the kids would raise their hand. And then I would ask them, does anybody know where that's found in the Bible? And every single year, zero people could tell me. So think about that. 100% of the kids, and these are high school kids, 100% of the kids knew the scripture incorrectly. And zero of them knew where it was. That means they got it from their parents. And their parents didn't know either. This is how the enemy like does a movement in the body of Christ that keeps everybody down, small, and broke. All we have to do is just a little bit of effort and go find it for ourselves to see what it really says. So we can go in there and be like, wait a minute. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is a root. Oh, well, it's not going to love money then. That's easy. Let's go look up the word love. Oh, it means to prefer or to make first place. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I'm good. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's go make some money. Let's go help some people. There's things like that all throughout our thinking that we have to 
weed out. And I want to help you guys do that as much as I can. I'm not sure exactly where I was, but we're just going to dive back in here. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they are, they have a message in their heart that they're trying to get out. They want to help people. And one of the best ways we can do that is for anybody on here. One of the best ways we can do that right now is through posting on social media, Facebook and Instagram. It gives you a place for you to teach what God's put on your heart, right? And we all have access to it. You could even be a kind of like practice grounds. You might only see one or two people see it or respond to it. Perfect. You helped two people today. That's pretty cool. God got to use you and you taught them something. Just a little message on your heart. Could be short, could be long, doesn't matter. Could be a video, could just be type. Could just type it out. Well, I was talking to him and he's got an amazing message on his heart. And, you know, I'm giving him a hard time because I'm like, hey man, let's do something with this thing. Did you post something today? Did you get something out there today? And he said it. He, he started off strong. He kind of had this thing where he's going to post every day. He started off really strong. And he had an issue where it was just kind of like, man, I'm starting to overthink it. Uh, I didn't post anything today or yesterday or the day before. So I'm like, what's the point? Like, who's listening to this? Uh, and if I if I do it wrong, I don't want to. I don't want to do it wrong because then I'll feel like I'm kind of messing up the call, messing up the mission, sort of thing. And we started talking about it, and God led me here to Romans eight one. And you've heard this before, but I don't think we take it and make it real to us when it's like, wait, this applies to me. It says, it's so simple. It just says, so now, right now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Do you belong to Christ Jesus? Who in here belongs to Christ? Both hands up for me. Okay. Guess what? There is now, this second, no condemnation in your life. Zero. In my study Bible, in the, in the footnotes, it says, condemnation is impossible if you're in Christ. There cannot be condemnation. It can't, it, it's, it's, it can't exist together. If you are in Christ and belong to him, you cannot have condemnation. Okay, here's how that plays in. We started talking about this. A lot of people don't realize what condemnation looks like in real life. I thought it meant, oh, it just means when I die, I get to go to heaven. That's not incorrect, but it's very incomplete. And my friend, as we were talking about this, he goes, if there's no condemnation, then I can just post and I don't have to overthink it. He's like, wait, I can just teach. I can just, I can just kind of post whatever I want. Isn't that an interesting revelation? Subconscious thoughts of condemnation were keeping him from getting his message out. The devil loves this. The devil loves. Here's what he loves, guys. I have an email going out about this later today, so check your email. I get a little bit more in-depth in this, but listen to this. The devil loves it when Christians are afraid to make mistakes. You need to write that down. The devil loves it when I'm afraid to make a mistake. A very common question I get, and I, I don't condemn anybody. I'm not mad at anybody for making these, the, having these questions and comments. I want you to have them so we can fix them, so we can root them out and replace them with God thoughts. But so if you've had this or you've messaged me about this, there, there's no condemnation in this either. But Trav, I don't want to pick the wrong business. What if I go after the wrong business and it's not the one God wants me to go after? 
Anybody felt that? But Trav, what if I set a goal, but it's not the goal God wants me to set, and I'm I'm setting it for myself. I'm just being selfish. Rob's not in his head. Anybody done that? Jeff? Yep. I'm all these things I have struggled with and had all of these conversations with me and God. Yeah, Sandra's been thinking about that. Yeah. Rebecca, Catherine. Lena, thank you for posting those things in there. I appreciate you. Thanks, Rebecca, for posting that in there. Yeah. So listen, here's, here's what's so funny about that. You guys are getting a preview from what I'm kind of teaching on later, but this is like insider inner circle. So y'all are y'all are on this side of things. Um yeah, Rochelle says, this is what has kept me from not doing what God told me to do. Yes, Elena's done that. Carcel's done that. Sometimes that's why I don't do anything. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about in, in my uh, teaching later today. So again, check your emails. Make sure you check your emails. It's going to be a good one. So listen, the devil loves that. He loves it when you feel like, oh, I'm so afraid to pick the wrong business. I'm so afraid to set the wrong goal. I'm so afraid. What if I do this and it's the wrong one? It's not the one God told me to do. Oh, what if I, what if I pursue this thing, but God didn't want me to pursue this. He wanted me to pursue that. And just like someone said in the comments, we just don't do anything. We're so afraid to make a mistake. This is the devil's strategy. Those big guys I mentioned earlier, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, all those guys, they just go for it because they don't have a fear of making a mistake and having God displeased with them. This is going to set you free in about 30 seconds from now. Why are we afraid to make a mistake by picking the wrong goal or picking the wrong business or what if I pursue this thing, but it's just me being selfish and God actually wanted to do, you to pursue that thing. We're so afraid to make a mistake because we're afraid it's going to displease God, that he's going to be disappointed in us, mad at us, sad at us, bummed out at us. Resentful, maybe. So listen. We're afraid to displease him. So out of fear, we do nothing. Hebrews 11, 6, this is the irony, says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So the other way to look at that is faith is what pleases God. Is this clicking for anybody? We are afraid to displease him, so we do nothing, but that's what displeases him. Acting out of fear is the opposite of faith. Faith is what pleases him. Fear is what displeases him. So out of fear of displeasing him, we displease him. So we do nothing. To set anybody free? What this does, thank you, Charcel, appreciate you. What this does is this gives you permission to go for it. This gives you permission to go all in on it. Fear is the opposite of faith. Out of fear, we're so, we're so afraid to make a mistake. We're so afraid because we're going to displease God if we pick the wrong thing. But here's what you're actually thinking. It's like, well, God's will, okay, it's, it's like this invisible list. And it's like, Travis is going to do this. I want him to do that. He can have this, but not that. Uh, he can pray for this. And if he gets it right, then okay. And if he does this, then, then yeah, that was his will. And we're like playing some weird guessing game. 
Like I, I, I prayed for something and it didn't happen. It must not have been on God's will. It must not have been in his list. What? We just make stuff up now? But that's how we think. It's messing everybody up. You have to understand this because this is how the devil stops you. Gets you to quit things really quick. Rob posted an amazing post inside of uh, Increase Warrior today. Rob, do you have a, are you able to unmute for a minute and just do a quick recap of that post? 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it was it's something I've struggled with. Sorry about that, guys. It's something I've struggled with. So it's definitely something that, you know, I can I can relate to. But yeah, essentially, there's times where I've had uh, down months in my business, especially early on when I was just starting. I left my day job and uh, you know, everything was on the line. Uh, the business, when I jumped into it, it was not profitable. There was cash flow, but it was not profitable. So it was a faith move. It was a faith jump. And we only did it, me and Elise only did it because we felt like we heard from God. We felt like we had a piece to go ahead and make that jump. And so as we did it, and I'm in here and I'm getting started, and there's, it's not profiting right? And, or, you know, it starts. And even as it gets going, I'm having some months, things are going, getting better than having some down months. And then they start stacking. And then this thought comes to my head, well, maybe I missed it. Maybe this isn't God's will for me to be successful in this business. And so me not prospering, me having these down months where I'm afraid we're going to go out of business is maybe God's way of getting me back into his will. Maybe I should have just stayed in my day job. <laughs> uh. And and so these are these are things when you say them out loud, they it kind of sounds crazy, right? But like like God would, you know, oh, this is the only way He can get you in His way. I gotta cause them to not prosper, right? You know. And so it's like, but you, this is what we think. This is how yeah. we think. And and so as a result, all of a sudden we're susceptible to those lies and we receive them. And then instead of coming back and fighting and saying, no, that's the devil. That's not God. I can clearly determine and know what God's will is when I look at scripture, right? Instead of doing that, I just receive it. It's like just taking the devil's arrows, right? And just like, yeah, I guess this is God shooting me. So I better just receive it. And if I end up broke and on the street, this is his, what this must be what his will is, you know? <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, it was, it was, a, it was just a great wake up call to say, Hey, no, this is not God's will. We can know God's will. And then just begin to, to, when we read it, I, I love it. It's just so simple. It's five things is read it, speak it. That's going to build our faith, ask him for wisdom and guidance on what to do, do what he says. And then after we do what he says, stick with it don't give up yeah right don't give up so anyway Trav thank you and thank you for posting that I think that's one of the most valuable pieces we can get as Christians is I don't know why I don't know where it came from I I, I think it was probably from preaching just in, kind of incomplete preaching that maybe you've heard because you'll hear things like man I I I went all in on this business and then, uh, man, God started to prosper it as I began to, to pray more and do some different things. God just prospered my business. And look, here we are today. Well, but what actually happened was we, we take that story and we think that's how it just is. But the truth of that story was, man, when I got into it, it was tough. I had to turn some things around. I had some late nights. I had some crazy stuff happen. Man, there are times when on the books, it looked bad. But I'm not a quitter. I'm going to make it work. See, a lot of times I was talking to somebody about they're um, going to do a, a new diet. And this is somebody I know who's been working for years to lose some weight. And he's had success for a little bit and then kind of bounces back. And so as I was talking to him this time, I said he, he was starting a new one. And he was like, man, I, I really, really hope this is the one that works. And I was like, hey, how about this? How about this time you just say this is the one that will work. I'm going to just work this one until it works. I'm going to just make this work. Man, we do it in business all the time. We do it with side hustles and ideas. And uh, you might even write a book and whatever it is. And it's like, 
man, it didn't take off instantly, so this must not be it. No, wrong way of thinking. That's going to keep you broke because you, the, the Bible says this in Proverbs 28, 19, he who cultivates his land will have plenty. But he who follows worthless people and pursuits will have poverty enough. The next verse, verse 20, continues it. And it says, the faithful man shall abound with blessings. That word faithful, it doesn't mean in the sense of he believes God. It means he's consistent and continually shows up. The person who continues abounds with blessing. And for me, that was my story. I went 15 years of not continually showing up, but from bouncing from idea to idea to idea to thing to thing to thing to thing, never staying with it long enough. I have to cultivate my land. But what did I keep doing? I kept looking at their land. They're making money faster. So I would go follow worthless people in pursuits and have poverty enough. Some of you guys are struggling financially because you just haven't stuck with it because you think that instant success means it's God's will. If it's hard or it doesn't work right away, not God's will. I must have missed it. No. Uh uh. That's, a, that's actually a bad thought pattern. It kept me from truly succeeding. I mean, how could it? You're not in it long enough. The faithful man abounds with blessing. One just continues. Pick one, stick with it. But what if I pick the wrong one trap? We already covered that. There's no condemnation in Christ. If you pick the wrong one, he'll gently tug on you to go to the other one. You didn't, the life's not over. You're not a horrible Christian. You're not condemned. God will just be like, hey. And you'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Not a big deal. The big deal is you don't do anything. Listen to this in Hebrews 11, excuse me, Hebrews 10, verse 38. My righteous ones, that's us. And if you don't think you're righteous, go back and listen to last two weeks replays. You are righteous. You are in a perfect relationship with God right now, and that can't be changed. My righteous ones live from faith. But if fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them. Let's listen to that. That was in the uh, Passion Translation. The New Living says, my righteous ones live by faith. And I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. The other translation says, I take no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back out of fear. My righteous ones live from faith. Remember, that's the opposite of fear. My soul takes no pleasure in those who shrink back out of fear. Man, we've been doing a lot of shrinking back. A lot of turning away, a lot of pulling out, a lot of quitting. Because of the misconception that if it's not instantly successful, then I missed it. And this is God's way of getting me back. I shouldn't have never quit my job. I should never have gone for this. It's like, yo, guys, guys, uh-uh. If it's hard, and look, it's there's gonna be hard, there's gonna be hard times. That's that's okay. Like, you don't even have to really give him a ton of attention. If you keep your faith built up, if you keep coming to stuff like this, if you follow the instructions that we that we teach you, like a lot of what we teach you is just how to keep your spot in a place where your your faith in a place where it's up. And so, no matter what happens to you, you're not phased. This this bulletproof life, this unfazable life, it's a lot of what we teach here. I'm looking at people in this room who have learned to implement this 
Rob's one of them. Joy's one of them. Sharon's one of them. Andrew's one of them. Jeff Finley, Fields, all these guys in here. Sarah, Gary, they're building. Vivian, Vivian's down there crushing the game. She's having like $50,000 months and stuff. I mean, hopefully you don't mind to share that, but she's doing crazy, awesome stuff for God out of boldness. She's a righteous one living from faith. She doesn't shrink back when things get tough. She's a faithful woman. She abounds with blessing, man. She continues in. I'm impressed with you guys. You guys are doing great. What you have to see is the things that we're afraid of are, are false. The things that we're afraid of are lies. And those lies are causing us to take actions that don't get us anywhere. We're believing lies. And here's how the devil, here's how the devil works. Like I was saying, they're always subtle. They're subtle lies. Hey, you don't want to be afraid to miss it. Like you, you don't want to pick the wrong thing because we have this nature, this viewpoint of God's nature that's incorrect. Like he'll be mad with us, displeased with us, disappointed in us, that we're bad stewards. No, what? That's not his nature. All it talks about in here is how much he loves us. This is nothing can separate you from his love. Not even picking the wrong business. Nothing can separate you from his love. Not even picking the wrong thing to pursue or setting the wrong goal. Like it talks about like hell and demons and Satan can't separate you from his love. Yet we're over here like, oh man, I hope I don't pick the wrong goal or the wrong business. And what's God going to think? He's like, yo, what? I'm leading you. I'm guiding you. You have that idea and that desire for that business. And it's stuck with you for five years, 10 years, 15 years. That idea for that ministry, that idea for that book, that idea for that podcast. It's a reason it's been sticking with you for so long. It's because God's trying to get it out. You guys know that God can't do a podcast, right? You guys know that God can't write books? God can do anything. No, he can't. He can't lie. He can't change. He can't actually go start a business. He can't actually start a ministry of an orphanage. He has to use you guys. You got to go write the book. He'll give you the, he'll tell you what to write, but you got to go do it. Right here, here, we think of it as kind of corny now, but like we're the hands and feet of Jesus. It's pretty accurate. You know who else uses people? Satan. It's the same flow. Drops an idea or a thought. You get the opportunity to accept it or reject it. If you accept it, you start to believe it, and then you take action on it. God works the same way. Drops an idea, drops a thought. You start to think on it. You get to choose to accept it or reject it. If you accept it, it starts to change who you are, and your actions reflect that. Start taking action steps. So, for instance, the devil could come in and say, hey, that goal you're looking to set, that's pretty selfish. Like, you're just trying to hit some revenue numbers there. You're just trying to make some money. I don't think that's from God. Like, it'd be a bummer if you went after that thing and then God's like, why'd you do that? I didn't want you to do that. Oh, and you start thinking on it and you hear this other story of somebody else who you think was evil because they made all this money. And then you're like, well, I don't want to be like them. And then, you know, they... They had a horrible life and their marriage was strained because he went and tried to make money. I don't want to do that. And then it starts to get in you, start thinking about it weird. And then it's like, ah, and you don't take any actions. And the devil's over here just like, that was easy. All right, next. Let me just, let me just tell all the Christians that's how it works and then they won't do anything. But God's up here like, hey, 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 don't shrink back. I take no pleasure in those who shrink back out of fear. My righteous ones live from faith. So if you want to please God, you actually take faith moves, not fear moves. You guys remember in the parable of the talents? Matthew 25. Who was the one that was called wicked, lazy, and evil? Put it in the chat. 
In the parable of the talents, who was the one that was called lazy, evil, and wicked? Andrew said, the one that did nothing. The one who hid the money and played it safe. Yep. The one who did nothing. The one who did nothing. The one who did nothing. If I can find it real quick, there's one little half half of a sentence in there. That's key. The one who is called, but think about those words that the master called him. Wicked, lazy, evil, slothful. He didn't do anything. He says, I was afraid to lose your money, so I hid it. Here it is. I was afraid to mess up. So I did nothing. Just so you guys know, the parable of the talents is not about like a talent, like singing or hula hooping or juggling or football or something. The parable of the talents is about money. A talent was a bag of silver, a measurement of silver. If you open any study Bible, it'll show you how much that was worth in today's money. So the study Bible I used from a few years ago a talent of silver was about $11,000 in today's money. So the one who was given five talents was given $55,000. And they were tasked to go on and to multiply that money, to do something with it. The guy who was given one, he said, I was afraid I was going to mess up, so I didn't do anything. But how many of us are living that way in all areas? God, I'm afraid to mess up, so I did nothing. Why are you afraid to mess up? Because you haven't had the revelation of righteousness yet. That's what we've been talking about this whole month. I'm going to read you one more scripture, maybe. And I want to get this in you. And then if you guys have any questions or anything you want to talk about, put it in the chat. Okay. Okay. Listen to this. This might be the fourth time you've heard it from me. Listen again. Write it down if you haven't. Romans 5, 1 and 2 in the Passion Translation. It puts it so well. Do you guys remember? Who remembers the definition of righteousness? It's actually a perfect relationship with God. When you hear the word righteous or righteousness, you can substitute it with a perfect relationship with God. Verse one says, our faith in Jesus. So that's the prerequisite. That's the condition. You have to do that part to get the next part. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's perfect relationship to us. And he now declares us flawless in his eyes. But I'm so afraid to mess up. No, he declares you flawless in his eyes. Your faith in Jesus transfers that perfect relationship to you. Flawless. You don't mess up. It goes on. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God. So you have peace with him. You don't have to be over there like, he's mad at me, disappointed in me. Look at, look at how bad I've been or how poorly I've performed or, man, I've been operating in fear. Man, he can't use me. No, 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 no. You have peace with God now. You guys are a team. And it's all because of what our Lord Jesus has done, not because of what you've done. Verse two, our faith guarantees permanent access into the marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. Man, 
you have permanent access to a perfect relationship with God. That's how you live now. My righteous ones live from faith and my soul takes no pleasure in them if they shrink back. Well, if you are flawless in his sight and you have permanent access, that means it can't be taken away. It can't be revoked based off your behavior. You have permanent access to a perfect relationship. Now go write the book. Now go make the post. You have a clear conscience. There's nothing holding you back anymore. But I'm so afraid to mess up. No, you're not, because you have permanent access to a perfect relationship. If you pick the wrong business or pick the wrong goal, the worst thing that can happen is he will tug on you towards the right one. I honestly think you'd be thrilled if you just did anything. If you just picked something and took a step. If you just opened up a Google Doc and outlined the book you've been wanting to write. Just take 20 minutes and outline the book. Go watch a YouTube video on how to start a YouTube channel. Just get a little bit of that knowledge you need. It's out there. It's free. Nothing holding you back. You got big question marks, so you haven't started it. If it's a podcast, go watch a YouTube video. Go search how to start a podcast. And then go do what it says. When there's no condemnation in Christ. You have permanent access to a perfect relationship. What are you afraid of? I love you guys. Is this helping anybody? You guys have any questions? Put them in the chat. Let me know a thought. Let me know if you're dealing with something. Catherine says it's helping. Lena says a perfect relationship. It's humbling and mind 